Hello and welcome back. This is Cheryl. I'm so thankful that you're here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a slider card. So I've gotten these Autumn Leaves Magical Powders and I'm going to create a background in order to punch out some maple leaves. So these are all Autumn Leaf colors. I'm not using the turquoise that's in this set because I don't really think that's a leaf color, um, but I am going to use the other four. So there's a green, there's an orange, there's a brown, and there's a crimson. So I like to spray some water on my mat underneath my paper. I find this helps control the warping a little bit. It kind of suctions the paper down a little bit so that it doesn't um, move, but it also helps it so it doesn't only warp one way. I just find it helpful. I sprayed a little bit of water on my paper, but I'll be spraying some more later. I'm gonna use all four of the colors. I'm just gonna mix the colors because I think that's gonna make more even fall leaves once I'm done. And I like to use this fan brush that you see to the right because I find that it helps to not get really large clumps of the color. It just kind of gives a nice light dusting. I used to use a Slurpee straw or a bigger brush, but I found I was getting really big clumps and I was trying to avoid that. So I'm just using a whole piece of eight and a half by 11 mixed media cardstock to do this. I usually use quarter sheets when I'm creating backgrounds, but because I'm just gonna punch out the entire thing, I figured I might as well use the entire sheet. Um, I end up not using the whole thing. I probably half a sheet would have been enough for what I am doing, but I just didn't wanna run out of paper and wish I'd created more. The other stuff will be used for other projects, so it definitely won't be going to waste. So you can use as much or as little of these powders as you want. And same with the water. You can use as much or as little as you want. You do need to use some though, because so you can't use none. Um, I like it when I use a lot of water. I like the colors running into each other. It's just the look that I like um, to create. But you can keep more of the paper color in the background if you want. Just use a little bit less water so that it runs a little bit less. Now the less water you use, the faster it's going to dry. I end up letting my piece of paper um, dry overnight, like I said, because I do like to use a lot of water. I like to have the colors really blend together well. And by the end of this, with the wet um, pigment powders, it kind of looks like a hot mess, but once you see the paper dry, it's absolutely beautiful. The brown in this set has a really nice kind of coppery shimmer to it that I think really lends itself well to fall leaves. I'm really close to being done covering this piece of paper here, but I did want to add a little bit more color to the outside edges so that I don't have any blank space. Depending on what you're doing with them, you could leave the blank space. You don't necessarily need to have it completely covered, but I wanted to make sure that I could use as much of the paper as possible. So here's the paper before I let it dry and like I said it kind of looks like a hot mess. There's a few warps in there I'm trying to pull out. And this is the paper when it's all dry. It looks a lot better and perfect for the fall leaves that I'm going to punch out of it. Now I, I did my original sample card for this card. I actually used a leaf die cut. It's an impression obsession die cut that you see right here, but there's only one leaf that I actually ended up using. I thought when I was die cutting that I was gonna use a combination of all of them and then chose not to. Now, rather than die cutting a whole bunch of leaves and not using 80% of them, I decided to just punch out maple leaves. I have some old maple leaf punches and I figured that would end up being a little bit quicker. So I end up um, punching about half of this paper because I kind of thought that I had enough leaves. I have a large maple leaf and a small one here. I'm just doing one of each to show you and I'll do the rest off camera. I have my glass mat below the black mat that you see and I don't want to be punching on it because I don't want to accidentally crack my glass. So I ended up doing it on a more sturdy surface off screen. So I've got all those leaves there to use when I'm ready for them. So I have a sheet of eight and a half by five and a half inch cardstock. I'm going to score at the four inch line and the eight inch line. So my finished card size is actually going to be four by five and a half, but you do need that half inch to glue to the back of the card. 
So you can't kind of get away from that unless you use a 12 by 12 paper and cut it down, but I didn't want to have the waste. So once I've scored those pieces, I fold them. And this is what the front of the card is going to look like. I have a piece of green cardstock here that's four inches wide by about two and a half inches tall. And I'm just going to rip to create some grassy hills. You could also use some scissors if you wanted to have a little bit more control and have them less messy looking, but I like the look of the ripping. I have my ruler here. I'm going to mark my cardstock here at two inches, the halfway mark, because I'm going to use a circle punch to punch out a part of a circle in order to have an area that we can grab the pull tab to pull down. So by putting that little mark there, I know where the half inch mark is and I can eyeball the rest of it from there. And I punch out some and then I kind of figure that it's not enough punched out. I wanna make sure that I'm able to put a piece of ribbon in my pull and I didn't have enough room there. So I punched it out a second time. Now that that is punched out, I'm going to glue down those grassy hills. I didn't put the grassy hills down first and then punch it because punching through four sheets of cardstock is gonna be a lot harder than doing two and then doing the punches of just the hills um, after this. Depending on your punch, it may be able to take it, but I've never been able to do four at a time. So I figured doing it in two steps was much better. So I'm gluing down my second hill here and then I'm going to take that punch and I'm going to glue that half inch or that semicircle notch out of that bottom there as well. Those bits that get punched out can just be tossed. I tuck them to the side, but they end up getting thrown out later. So you don't need to use them or keep them for anything unless you have a project that you can use them for. I have a tree die cut here that I'm going to glue down. This one is a Tailored Expressions one. Any bare tree die cut will work. I wanted one that was tall enough for the card and I wanted one that was bare that didn't have any leaves because obviously we're gonna be adding the maple leaves to this. So I'm gonna use my Distress Collage Medium to glue it down. I like to use the Distress Collage Medium just because if any glue happens to seep out, it dries completely clear and it also dries matte so you don't even see where the glue is. Not that that happens often, but it is nice to know that you're not gonna actually see where any glue is and you're not gonna have some sticky residue. So that gets glued down, and then I start to glue down my maple leaves. Now, you'll notice I put an acrylic block over some of the areas where the maple leaves are, and that's just to hold them down so that I can continue gluing more leaves down on different areas. I just find it helpful to have something to hold it down rather than me having to hold it down for um, a few seconds and it taking longer. So I try to use some of the bigger leaves first and then I go and layer on top with some of the smaller leaves. And I like to try to have some of them hanging down, especially from the top of the card, because I think that would look a little bit more natural. You'll see me put some that um, stand up on some of the bottom branches of the, of the card. The other thing you'll notice is I don't glue all of the leaves within the card front. Some of them go over the edge and that's to make it look a little bit more natural as well, those ends will get cut off once everything is dry.
So I have all my glue leaves glued down and the glue has now dried. So I'm ready to trim those extra pieces off that go over the edges of the card. Now that my front image is done, I'm going to open up the card so it's the full eight and a half by five and a half inches out, and we're gonna work on the channel for the slider. So I'm lining up the folded notch around that one inch mark. I want my slider um, to come in about an inch, and I'm going, starting from an inch below the top of the card to about the top of the hill, and I don't go any farther than an inch to the bottom of the card. Once I have that done, I can slide a little piece of cardstock in there. It's about a half inches wide, and you don't want it any more than about three and three quarters inches. We can cut off any excess um, later, but you don't want it to go past the folds of the card. Once I have that completely straight, I'm just gonna use a piece of painter's tape just to hold the piece in place in the front so that I know it's not gonna move. I'm using some Sukwang tape to put some tape on that tab for the inside of the card. This tape is quarter inch, so I do end up using two strips of it. And I'm staying away from that slide slot by about a half an inch. I don't wanna go to have tape right up to that edge. Um, it's gonna slide a little bit better if you stay away from that slide or that slot. I can take the backing of that tape off and then I'm gonna line my insert slide piece with the edges where I have my notch cut out. I'm making sure that it's centered and then I lay it down so that adhesive can glue to that slide piece. I'm gonna take the painter's tape off the front and then I'm just gonna test it, make sure that it's freely sliding and that I don't have anything catching. Once that is done, I'm going to put that Sukwang tape along my half inch tab on the side and I'm gonna glue that card closed. Now I end up not gluing the top of my card, so you can actually see this, um, the slide part in there. If you prefer, you can put some tape on the top of your card so that that is completely closed as well. I'm folding that tab in, and you'll notice that I didn't take all of the backing off of that tape. I took about an inch of it off, and then I'm making sure that everything is straight and holding it in place while I take the remainder of that backing off. That way I don't have something sticking where I don't necessarily want it to stick um, and have to rip something apart. I just have a, you have a little bit more control this way. And now you just saw that I added some of that Sukwang to the little slot or the slide in the front. I'm gonna take that backing off and I'm gonna glue a leaf to that. Now my slide my piece of cardstock there is green. You could also do it the same color as your cardstock base, in this case blue, or your card base, in this case blue. Um, I chose not to, I didn't have a scrap of blue that was the right color, and any excess you'll see that I'm just trimming that off anyway, so you don't actually see what color the slot or the slide is. So it really doesn't make a difference, but if you prefer to have it um, the same color, you absolutely can. Now, as I'm testing it, it's catching on one of the leaves that I have glued to the front. So all I do to fix that is just lift my cardstock leaf on the slide a little bit up so that it doesn't catch. And then when I go to test it, it works out perfectly. Now I'm going to use a crop -a dial because it's got two different sized holes that it can punch and I'm gonna punch a hole in my slide or my tab that is on the inside of the card. And that's so that I can put a piece of ribbon in there so that it's just something that um, easier to hold and it also kind of to me suggests to someone that you're giving the card to that there's something there, there's something for them to pull. If you happen to have a stamp that says pull, you can stamp that there as well but it just gives it a little bit more reinforcement and I like the look of it. So I pushed in a folded piece of ribbon into that um, hole that was just punched and then I'm sliding those ends of the ribbon through 
You could also just take one end of the ribbon and put it in and then just tie it. I like the way this looks better. This is why I did it this way. And once you have your ribbon secured, that slide is done. Now, one thing I would suggest doing is um, stamping something on the inside of the card to kind of reveal a message. I would have loved to stamp Hello Fall on this one, but I don't actually have a stamp that says that. And I um, looked at my local store for one and I couldn't find one. So um, it's remaining blank for the moment, but it can be added to later. You can also write a personal message on the back and your card is completely done. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.